Hello ladies and gentlemen, Keaton here and welcome to the Tangry Drop Weekly Recap. It's been a pretty fun week to be honest. A lot of cool things happened this week. A lot of things I would really, really love to highlight, but there was so much, you know, that I could that we would be here for like half an hour. And, you know, that's not really the point of this video. So it's uh, it's going to be tough to decide which ones we uh, highlight this week. But uh, why don't we get to the week, shall we not waste any more time than necessary? So on Monday, Joe played the Battlefield Hardline beta. This is like the weird mashup of Battlefield and Payday, uh, I guess, where uh players play as cops and robbers it, it looks pretty cool looks like battlefield actually you know with uh, some payday ish elements so definitely check it out if you would like to see his entire fiasco of the hardline beta and definitely go ahead and show him some love so maybe he'll do more if you uh, want to see more yeah yo on tuesday we continue the shooting of the guns and the violence with uh my look at bro force now, I learned after the video was posted that apparently the bros in the game, which are the characters you play, uh, have their own special abilities. I did not know that, so that was good to learn. So yeah, I would say that maybe Broforce needs a little bit of a tutorial or something, or maybe just more emphasis on checking out the controls beforehand, because, you know, guys are prone to not check out the instructions for things. That's still a thing, right? I don't know, that used to be like a 90s joke. I don't know. But anyway, you know, Bro Force features a lot of shooting and explosions, and there was a funny moment where I started to second guess whether or not this game had any more tricks to pull. And then I got to like, uh, I guess what would be considered a boss, and uh, my expectations were uh, met. <laughs> that is a big cannon. Oh my god, that is a big freaking cannon. It's actually shooting people. It's shooting people. Okay, this is cool. This is cool. It's it's back on the tr train of crazy. Crazy train. <laughs> I did not think that thing was going to shoot people. So yeah, if you would like to see me liberate these places for America, go ahead and check out Bro Force. It's pretty good. Now on Wednesday... Joe played more of the forest. Now this is about an hour long video, but it does, honestly doesn't feel that way if you watch it. And Joe's moment for this video was actually him coming across a very interesting campsite with some unfortunate non-survivors. Well, is, is that the right term to use? I don't know. Check it out yourself. Huh. Ah. Oh. 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 God. What the fuck? Look at this guy. Oh shit, there's a tennis player, and they've kind of put tennis balls in his stomach, what the fuck? Holy shit, look at all those tennis balls in his stomach. Oh god, he did not die pleasantly. Jesus. Oh fuck, there's another one. This camp of tennis players is not good. Holy shit, what is in his face? Oh, it's like a tennis racket. Yep. So as you can see, Joe uh, discovered some interesting corpses. There are some weird things happening on the forest island thingy-majiggy. So, you know, who knows? And there's a secondary uh, clip I kind of want to show. So here's the thing. The forest, a very interesting game. A little janky, but it does hold some secrets. And there's something I did want to highlight if uh, Joe wasn't going to highlight it himself. And that's actually what happened much, much later on in the video. And I'm just going to show you a little hint of it on the preview screen here. And that is Joe discovered something very interesting. Now again, I say it's janky because it's an alpha, but that thing is horrifying. If you want to see that thing more up close and personal, definitely go ahead and check out the forest video. Seriously, that video is pretty dang good. <laughs> a lot happens in it. A lot of interesting things go down and some new things happen as well. So check it out the forest. Now on Wednesday, we also did more murder. Now this time it took place in a 7-Eleven. And that was quite interesting, actually. It was a nice change of pace from the other sort of like murder-ish games that we were playing, which often took place in like large areas, like a mall or uh, a giant mansion. But this was very closed off 
technically speaking. And we had a lot of fun with it. A lot of uh, different types of mind games going on. You know, not so much trying to convince others, just sort of just waiting it out and uh, seeing seeing what happens. It's, it's pretty fun. Just to see their their trust for everyone slowly degrading, it's just so much fun to, to toy with that, and I'm, I'm, I'm really glad we continue playing it. And um, there's actually a second part to that video that's coming out uh, next week, so hope you're ready for more murder, because it's on your way, and it's, it's pretty fun as well. So uh, check it out, murder, second Wednesday video, moving on. Now on Thursday, oh boy, where to even begin with Thursday's video? So on Thursday, I did, as usual, Nuclear Throne. And I learned um, that people take my videos very seriously. For those of you who do not know, a while back, actually, I started weaving this narrative of Keaton versus the game. And, you know, I would, I would blame all my shortcomings on the game because it was more fun doing that than simply reacting to the same things happening over and over again because, you know, I'm not very good at that game and I don't try to be good at that game. I've stepped it up in terms of narrative and this week I was so excited because I did literally try to record this two days prior to the actual version that came out, but it turned out to that my commentary, I wasn't happy with it. So I just redid it and it actually gave me an opportunity to weave in the narrative of three machine guns showing up and it was it was awesome. I was so excited for that. I was just like, yes, we now have a an antagonist to bind against. And um, I don't know, maybe I overdid it. But <laughs> but damn was the response to that video. Not what I was expecting at all. Like I criticize the rats that are programmed to show up in the sewers. And I tell the rats stop showing up in the sewers because you're perpetuating the stereotype that rats are found in sewers. That is supposed to be silly. And it's, it blows my mind that people took that at face value and said, you got to stop complaining about everything. In the video, I actually say, you know what, I just repeated myself. I'm sure someone's going to come across that part and think that I've been complaining about the same things for the entire video. And that's what actually happened with some people. It's meant to be that way. Calm the hell down. Anyway, you should check out the video. It's actually funny if you have a sense of humor. <laughs> Moving on. Good lord. Yeah, this is a nice way to transition anyway. On Friday, we did Latell. And what does Latell start with? Me being silly and doing a cute anime girl voice. Yeah. George and Anna. Get this on. Tim son. Today we. Today we're playing. My <laughs> Latel, <laughs> I was trying to do a kawaii anime intro, you know, they go, ah, You failed so bad. Georgia. <laughs> Why are you so mean? <laughs> 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 That's how we started Latel. Latel is a free-to-play RPG. It's uh, on Steam. It just came to Steam, actually. It's, it's been around a while, I think since like 2008. And you know, I wanted us to play something really different and uh, I was really hoping they would get more into it like, you know, we would start doing anime talk but Joe and Kevin weren't having it and I uh, I really applaud Tim for at least, you know, humoring me a bit with his, with his one or two moments of anime cutesy talk, but <laughs> I think at the end of the day, everyone sort of warmed up to it, so I don't know, maybe we'll do more Latel. <laughs> But you guys should check it out. It's it's like we usually play games where we like shoot things and kill things and I don't know solve puzzles together. <laughs> but this is just a whole different monster. And if you want to see something different and or you want to see us uh struggle to do the tutorial for a bit, I don't know. <laughs> it was just a fun experience. Let's tell. Uh, maybe not everyone's cup of tea, but you know it was a nice change of pace. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Moving on. So on Saturday, we did more No More Room in Hell. That game still kicks our butt to no end, man. It's, it's very interesting, that game. Um, it definitely has some jank on it that you gotta, you gotta readjust your entire uh, ideal of how you play that game. Because there's, there are things about it, like the Vortex Zombies, that you don't expect that actually happen. And 
that stuff you have to deal with is very different from like Left 4 Dead or pretty much any other zombie game out there right now. Like you can't just go in, whack them and then move out because their programming will suck you in and keep you there. So it's a very, it's a very bizarre kind of game. One that we, I, I don't think we're going to stop until we actually beat one. And we actually got pretty far in this episode, which unfortunately I think like the last half of it is pretty much us like trying to navigate Joe through the level because we've all died and we're just like, you know, we can fly through the level and uh, we're trying to figure out how the hell you, you do this because um, the game suffers from not really directing you well. And like in the uh, in the level that we played, a lot of the doors were locked, so it was really hard navigating that uh, location. But you know, it was fun for what it was. <laughs> it was an interesting change of pace for us to have to navigate uh, Joe through the this really abnormally large cabin. But um, it was fun. Definitely not what I was expecting when we decided to play No More Room in Hell. But you know, that's how it goes sometimes. Check it out, No More Room in Hell. And that uh, does it for the Tangry Drop Weekly Recap this week. A lot of really fun stuff happened this week, I gotta say. And of course, you know, the whole Nuclear Throne thing, jeez, I don't even know, man. But you know, the other days of the week... No, you know what, even that video, I really liked that video, I thought it had a good narrative. Everything we released uh, this week, I think, it was really cool, really fun. We had some new stuff. So, I mean, you know, we had the fun shenanigans and uh, and the uh, struggles. Yeah, we had it all this week. Really, really, really solid week of videos for your viewing pleasure. So I highly recommend you go check out the videos you have not watched this week because all of them are pretty, uh, pretty fun. And some of them are actually really short too, like 20 minute videos. So uh, if you're just looking for something to uh, pass the time, 20 minute videos right there. And again, if you have like an hour to spend, Watch Joe's Forest video, it's pretty freaking cool. And with that said, you know, we've got more coming next week. Uh, murder, uh, we recorded a lot of stuff uh, over the past week. I'm not sure which ones we are actually releasing this week, so you'll have to stay tuned. And as always, there will be a Nuclear Throne video on Thursday, as well as the Nuclear Throne weekly updates, so be on the lookout for those. And next week, we shall talk more about the site in our monthly vlog. Oh yeah, next week, we shall have our monthly Binding of Isaac playthrough. So yeah, with that said, that was the Tengu Drop Weekly Recap for this week. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching throughout the week if you have. If not, once again, you can check out all the videos in the description. And yeah, hope you had an amazing week and we'll see you guys next week. Bye!